little bit of a late upload last night for anybody who uh, clicked on it when they saw the notification. But I got some shit going on, man. I got a, I got a line of all sorts of little projects and fill my head with economics info and Excel sheet, whatever else, and thermodynamics and fucking all sorts of bananas. And the worst part is all unrelated to lifting. You know, I mean, nothing that's going to improve my pumps. If anything, potentially going to kind of get in the way of me making sure I get my meals in and I could actually affect the pump. And as I'm sure you know, anything that will kind of get in the way of that, yikes. Not awesome. But then again, that's probably just like a physical representation of my irresponsibility with, uh, you know, outside factors of the gym, which I should really just maybe get on top of more so that when I actually do have extra shit, it doesn't interfere. You know, I'm sure there's millions of lifters out there right now. Oh man, I'm busy studying. I can't go to the gym. Come on. I know you're not doing an actual straight eight hour study session per day, right? You got an hour. You got an hour to get in the gym, man. Come on, get real. Get freaking real. So, what's the plan for tonight? Chest. Chest and potentially a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra something something at the end. Uh, potentially, um, <gasps> potentially some calves. We'll see. But I really wish that this gym had a Smith machine. I would love some Incline Smith right about now, but unfortunately, I am be stuck with machine press, dumb, er, well, I guess I could do dumbbell bench, but the dumbbells aren't really heavy enough, at least not for what I would like to use, and then uh, incline barbell, but that'll still be pretty good, so I'm sure once I finish warming up my tries and my shoulders and a little bit of back, plus some chest activation, that I'll probably just jump on incline barbell like normal, you know, a couple, eh, I think I might tone back the weight a little bit. When I do, like the last chest day was like three plates and a 25 for, I think I got maybe eight, eight with assistance too on a few of those. Sometimes that feels just a little bit too hefty. Like if I'm really on it that day, good combination of rest, food, hydration, everything, and I'm just like extra strong, then it does feel pretty good for me to do a real heavy set because I'm just kind of throwing weight around, a ton of tension. But like, I don't know, I, I almost want to say good tension. But in terms of actually getting a pump, sometimes when I do a set like that, that's, you know, the reps are already grinders in the beginning. I don't know, I don't know if that's necessarily the best method. Like if I were to do, uh, like let's say I could do four plates tonight. I don't think I can. But let's say I can do four plates for like eight reps. You know? And I do one set of that and then move on to like three plates for 12 or something like that. I don't know. I think I might kind of want to start off with just the three. And instead of trying to push the weights on that first set, maybe cut it down weight-wise and do a little bit higher volume. So let's let's say maybe I get warmed up and then the first set is just with uh, with three plates. And then maybe get, I don't know, like 15 or something like that. And then just kind of keep it at that same weight for a couple sets and then move on to whatever kind of squeezing movement or whatever I want to get into. But again, I'm just kind of nitpicking at styles and trying to change shit up. You know, I don't want to do the same lift twice. Definitely not twice in a row. But as long as I do my five or six, I don't really know how many sets I'll do. I kind of have to go by feeling. Or I'm kind of going by feeling right now. You know, if I do five sets, and just based off, I guess, all my experience so far training, and, like, how pumps feel and how lifts have felt, you know, if I hit set five, I'm like, yeah, I want to do a few more. Then I'll, you know, I'll do maybe seven or eight. Or maybe, let's say, I hit set number four. I do, like, three sets of incline bench, and then one set of cable flies. And for whatever reason, like, those incline bench sets were just, like perfect like they were crazy good 
good squeeze, good fatigue, good pump, and then I do one set of flies, and I'm like, dude, my chest is on fucking fire. I'm fully pumped. I can't get any crazier than this. That's what I'm gonna call it. You know, that's uh, that's kind of a style that I'm, tr I'm uh, trying out right now. But yeah, so you know, once I do those sets or whatever, no matter what order exercise selection they are, as long as the sets are hard, I know I'm gonna be satisfied with the lift. I could do two sets of incline bench, two sets of cable flies, two sets of machine press, and as long as all those sets were hard and good, that'd be a good workout, you know? Uh, don't get too in detail with the particulars of how your lifts should look. As long as you actually do hard sets, you're good, you know? I could do a bicep day where I do fucking eight sets of just normal dumbbell curls and so as long as I'm fully pumped and I feel like I've fatigued my biceps in their entirety I'm like damn good ass lift let's go check the pump you know so same thing with back or anything else I could just sit there and do three sets of pull downs and then three sets of cable rows and if I feel well fatigued I got a good pump and just overall I'm satisfied with the lift then I think that's within the range of volume which is going to be good for you. If you're doing a, uh, oh man, yeah. And then, I don't know, even if you do a lot of volume, like let's say you're busting into like the 15 set range. I mean, sure, those sets may not be as intense as like a five set workout, but you're still kind of like overloading your, your whatever muscle you're trying to hit with work. So I think that's still going to work too, man. When I started out lifting, I was doing like 25 sets a workout. So my chest and tricep day was literally 25 sets of chest and 25 sets of pushdowns. I was doing a, like a 5x5 five five style. Five exercises, five sets each. Now those sets were kind of fluffy. I think I would have been better off with sets where I really made sure everyone was like pushing it to the limit. You know, in a Dorian Yates, Mike Menser esque style, I, I do kind of lean towards that technique. But as long as you're in the gym and you're going hard, you're going to be making progress. And if you don't, if you plateau, then you know, just take a step back, look at what you've been doing, and you know, try to adjust it accordingly. So I'm just trying not to let this Jeep crash into me and park and get started. He does. He's working on it. All right, let's, uh, let's get in there. Okay, I guess that car speech was, um, well, I think it was valid, but I'm not going to follow that advice today. So uh, can I get a quick little spot ski on this one? Oh, yeah, sure. Just okay. on the, probably a few assisted reps at the end. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me play some kind of song and... Yep. Whoa. Come on. Yep. Come here. Yep. Yeah, help on these shoes. Gotcha. One more. Okay. Come on. Push. Okay. Oh. Hey, that's good. What's that? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, struggling over here. There's zero chance that last one would have happened. Oh my God, that's uh, that's enough normal reps. Let's uh, let's change it up, but not really. 
because I'm still going to do incline bench, but I want to superset some flies in too. It's like a uh, pre-exhaust. We can do um, a little bit of a one-shot take for this superset, but it's going to be normal cable flies, pretty heavy too, as like portion A, and then it's kind of a drop set slash superset finisher. I'll come back over, and by the time I do a whole set of these flies, two plates is going to feel like four. <coughs> At least that's the idea. So. I'll see how this feels. If it feels pretty good, I'll just fucking sit here and spam these. But if it feels like shit, I'll just move on. few more just like that. One more. One more will be good. Okay, last one of these. I gotta make sure I go hard on it. Not that I wasn't going hard on the earlier ones, but just as your lift progresses, it's not difficult to kind of get in your mind. Okay, I've done some hard sets. These ones can be a little fluffy, whatever. Don't even think about it. Do not think about it. If you, you think Usain Bolt takes his foot off the gas, if he's winning a sprint just because he's a little bit ahead of everybody else. You know, I've already done the hard work. I'll chill out. No, man. Come on. Have some follow through. All right. Ugh. I think let's just go do a set of flies with a superset drop set. Or no, no. Just with a drop set, I guess. And then we're done. This is already added up to be a really good fucking chest day. Now I just want to put the finishing touches on it. Woo. Highly recommend this kind of drop set. You know. And it could be any kind of fly. Pet flies, dumbbell flies, cable. And any kind of pressing. Bench, smith, dumbbell machine you know, get creative with this kind of shit as long as you can do something be done with the set and say whoa fuck you're probably in the zone of at least doing something when i was doing these cable flies earlier since i was super setting them with an incline pressing movement i was kind of doing a little bit of a decline fly kind of making sure that after the super set was over 
my lower pecs and my upper pecs were fully pumped. Now, obviously, I think everybody should be biasing their upper chest when it comes to pressing movements and, you know, their chest days. It's for the most part, your upper chest, that shelf, that doesn't just kind of happen. I think you really got to hit your upper chest directly. But I want a little bit of lower pec activation, of course. So I think straight set of uh, normal cable flies right in front of me, kind of shoulder height. And it's kind of hard to portray, but as I'm doing these, I want my upper pecs specifically to flex the hardest. So even though I'm like doing a fly right in front of me, pretty much a flat motion, I'm still almost trying to like turn my hands inward and upward towards the top of the rep, as you can kind of imagine. But you know, whatever you gotta do, be able to feel some shit up here firing, I think it's gonna be good for you. No. Yeah. just like that but instead of being done I'll drop the weight do some decline flies and then I think we're complete we can check the pump Ugh. We are done. Chest is complete. Let's go check the pump, man. Fuck. Oh. All right. So let's uh, let's run down what the workout ended up being. It was shit. Was it three normal heavy sets of bench or was it two? I can't remember. A few sets of heavy bench, followed by some cable flies, superset it into lighter bench. Failure, of course. And then. Just a couple more cable flies to finish it off. I mean, what else is a chest day consisted of apart from some pressing and then some flies? So I think those are the two key components of a good chest day, a good chest pump. Well, I can leave knowing for sure I had a good day. But you know me, I'm not gonna. I gotta see what went down, see what kind of physical changes have occurred. And I can tell just by seeing the outline in this baggy ass shirt there's some shit going down in here i was uh i meant to say this in the car on the way here but i forgot you know when it comes to what you're wearing in the gym this is kind of the gym is an interesting place you know it's kind of an equilibrium of sorts it doesn't matter how much dough you've got how much drip you're fucking repping or flexing with right it's kind of a the great equalizer in here it's all about beef and not even just size you know it's kind of about your intensity too i could see a big ass dude floating around freak level but i'm i'd probably be more impressed with the smaller dude who's actually training like a fucking beast you know so i don't know clothes make the man but they do not make the lifter all right take that to heart so honestly if you're spending more than a couple minutes like Okay, this matches with this. Oh, I don't want to wear this. I think you've gone down the wrong path. Let's check this fucking pump. Oh. 
Be a little more centered. Oh, that was a good shot. But goddamn, man. It is fucking hard to hold a vacuum post lift. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh. Oh. oh my goodness. Classic most muscular. Fucking love it. Absolutely love it. This, these striations and veins, I need to get rid of those pronto. On my way home, not only am I stopping at Kroger, I gotta stop at Wendy's too, get some spicy chicken sandwiches in my system. Even though I know I'm gonna probably pay for it tomorrow in the bathroom, I fucking love them. But that's a, uh, yeah. So maybe whether or not this helps, I just want to fucking look at my upper chest. But when you think about flexing, for the most part, you're kind of thinking about pulling your arms downward, right? Pulling your arms downward together. That's how you kind of think about flexing your pecs. But you kind of like scoop them upward and get your upper chest firing. All this stuff up here, these fucking lines, that is what I fucking love. You know, and every time I do those flies or incline, um, incline pressing of any sorts, and I'm trying to hit my upper chest, that's what I'm thinking about. And with some movements, what I do when I'm pressing is I actually tuck my head down. Now, not usually with like incline barbell, having your head kind of up against the bench to neutral. I think that's probably better. That's just what I like. But with some cable presses and like with those dumbbell flies where I hold the dumbbells in front of my body, and go like this. I like to tuck my chin in, and I didn't come up with this. I'm stealing this from our old pal Jay Cutler. I was watching a video of him talking about how, you know, flexing his upper chest kind of to help him get a little mind muscle connection. That may not be the exact reason he said. I'm kind of I'm just paraphrasing, but you tuck his chin in, and if you do it, you can physically feel this upper part of your chest flexing. You know. And I can tell just by feeling, you know, I've kind of developed enough. Like, I can feel my collarbone, and when I flex my upper chest, I can feel that it's poking out above my collarbone. You know, I want to get to the level where, uh, you know, you just fucking stand up, and you're putting, like, a shaker cup right here. So, yeah, here's my little outline. I want this part of my chest, like, literally an inch thicker at least. Obviously, once I get there... I'll probably want it to be even bigger, but main idea is I want my upper chest to jump out at you and literally fucking scare you. So that's all I got. Let's get in the car, get home, start grubbing, and ah, jeez. Also, start studying. Let's not think about that. All right. Now that was a nice little freaking pump. Today was kind of weird for me. Usually, it's uh, it's hard to distract me before I start my lift. Now, I don't mind being in here for like an extra hour and a half talking to somebody, or if there's a little posse, and we're all just kind of walking around, whatever, everybody's done lifting. It's kind of just like a hangout spot in a way. Of course, after the workout's over, you know. But, I don't know, today I was talking to one of my dudes in there, and I was going on for like 30 minutes. He was, uh, he was done, and I hadn't started yet. Usually it's the other way around. Usually I wait until I'm finished before I start yapping. But whatever. Whatever. I took a little bit extra long with my warm-up too. Uh, I usually don't show it just because it's kind of... There's not really much to say when I'm warming up. I just do some tricep pushdowns, some rotator cuff activations. Like, you know, when you grab like a light pair of dumbbells in front of the dumbbell rack and you sit here and you do these really just kind of get my whole shoulder joint warmed up. And then when I'm on the cables, some rows too. I want my back to be nice and activated so I can have a stable base to press from. I'm sure any power lifter worth their salt 
when they hear me say that, they're like, yeah, he knows what he's saying, right? And then some, you know, cable presses just to make sure my pecs are nice and warm. Going through that whole process, apart from the fact that it just makes me feel better when I'm pressing, just I mean, it feels better to have, to be warmed up before you throw any crazy weight around. I think that goes without saying. But it also kind of, it'll tell me if anything's a little funky. Like, my right chest has a history of being a little fucked up. Uh, one time when I was younger, I say younger, it was only like two years ago. Uh, this was back, uh, I feel like I've told this story before, but I'll bring it up again. I'd say this was my worst pec injury. Now, it wasn't like hospital worthy. It was just no more chest for a while, let it kind of heal itself up. Like, there was no bruising on the skin or anything. But I'm doing flat bench, which I never do. I happened to, all the other benches were taken. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. And uh, of course, I go too heavy. I'm doing like three, three something flat. Just rep after rep. Probably didn't even warm up enough either. Like a total chump. Uh, but, you know, rep number five. Oh, I feel something. And not like a, not like a snap. Like, uh, I've never had like a tendon or anything like that rip off. But the basic, um, description of how I hear that kind of shit goes is like when you when you pull a tendon off or if you really hit something like that you don't necessarily feel a pain it just kind of happens and then you're like oh shit fuck you know but with a muscle that fucker hurts so I'm doing my heavy reps which totally was not warmed up enough for total chump move and the, my right went real kind of deep oh burning I fucking instantly have the guy oh, who spotted me grab it rack it or actually, no, I think maybe I did an extra rep, too, just to push through it. Like, a, if I was being a total fool before for not warming up, I was being a complete fucking idiot for doing another rep. Uh, fucking beyond rookie move. But, yeah, I was I didn't do any heavy pressing for chest for, like, two months. I wanted to totally let it chill out. So, every so often, uh, if I do something which kind of tweaks it, like, let's say I don't get very good rest, not very well hydrated or well fed, and then... Maybe I do a chest day and jump into the weight a little bit too early without warming up. And sometimes I might feel it a little. So that warm up is, it can be a bit of an indicator to me. Like, okay, you feel a little tight. You feel, you feel a little tense in there. Maybe you should chill out, do a bit of a lighter squeezing day instead. Or maybe if it feels really crazy, you know, no chest at all. Just do something else. So the warm up serves two purposes. For me with chest... Chest requires the most warm-up out of any lift. Just because it's kind of, well, obviously, you get a lot of moving parts, especially inside of your shoulder, which are pretty delicate, and you can fuck them up pretty easily. And Not only from just, like, hearing that, but, you know, from my own experience, I just know that when I do a good warm-up, I make sure my triceps are exposed to some weight, plus my front delts, too. I mean, I'm not just doing a little bit of rotator cuff work. I'll stand in front of the dumbbells, do a couple rotators, do a little bit of rear delt activation, do some front raises because my front delts are going to come into play a little bit and having just everything up here warm is going to make me feel better when I really try to push it weight-wise with the pressing. Yeah, but what the hell was I even saying? Oh, yeah, no. So today I spent extra long warming up, partially just because I was doing a little chatting during, a little chatting during the warm-up, but made pressing feel pretty good. I, uh, maybe I'm going to take a little bit longer with those. Now, these warm-up sets that I'm talking about, they are not working sets. This is not me doing legit work. I'm just sitting there with a moderate weight, you know, maybe five reps of tricep pushdowns and then racking it done, you know. So, but good hard sets. Definitely like having a spotter. Uh, and like I was saying on the way in here, I am having separation anxiety. I'm... I miss the Smith machine, man. I miss it. Uh, and they had some of the best Smith machines I've ever used in this gym. I don't know why they got rid of them. You know, it doesn't hurt, but it's just a, it's just a cold ache on my soul that they got rid of those. But another benefit of having multiple gym memberships, if I'm really dying for an incline Smith, I'll just go somewhere else. Boom, problem solved. Hard chest day, time to transition into, or back into studying mode, not ideal, but whatever, 
get some meals in me. I'll probably do... Yeah, this is kind of a classic. Whenever I have to sit down for a while, uh, I don't necessarily want like multiple little plates of stuff. I kind of just have, like, like having a big bowl to sort of pick at for a while. So I'll do pounded ground beef, like five slices of American cheese, barbecue sauce, and then two packs of instant, uh, like Ben's instant rice. So that ends up being, I don't even know how many calories I'd have to track it. But, you know, it's upwards toward about 100 grams of protein. Now, this is not all in one sitting, and this is over the course of like a while. Uh, but like 100 grams of protein, getting up in like the probably 50 grams of fat-ish area. And then about 150 grams of carbs. That's not nothing, man. That is a pretty solid amount of food to get into your system. And in a pretty, you know, easily downable fashion. The one thing that I kind of make sure I do is whenever I'm eating, uh, or whenever I'm kind of making meals for myself, I try to make sure that they're reasonably moist, you know, well sauced, because it's just no fun to chow down on something dry. Like if I was just sitting here with a big ass plate of rice and chicken, and uh, oh man, yeah, like the dining hall chicken, of course I don't have to go to the dining hall now, but when I did, man, it's just uh, not not ideal you know if food's easy for you to eat then it's gonna be easy for you to eat more so in the dining context that, that might not be what you're looking for you know if you're trying to cut down but if you're bulking up that could be exactly what you're looking for yet another 12 sighting unlucky for that guy so that'll probably be the plan for tonight's next meal and then after that I don't know have some ice cream or something Oh yeah, the Wendy's. Yeah, I forgot I was headed over there. I just got excited again. Oh yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, main idea, get a good lift in, get some, uh, get all sorts of calories in from you know, whatever source of your choice. Now, of course, I want you to couple that with high quality protein sources. You know, when I say I kind of like to eat whatever, and it's just calories, you know, it's just food for the furnace to burn through with your training. I do believe that. I do kind of stand by that in terms of a muscle gaining sense. But protein, you got to be a bit of a stickler. You know, you can read, I don't know, man. I'm trying to think of something that's like quote unquote high in protein, but it's probably just a trash source. Let me think. I don't know. You know, if you read on your packet of bread, five grams of protein per slice. I don't know. I'm not inclined to believe it. Let's say you have like fucking, you know, let's say you're, you love fucking toast or something with your breakfast. You got, you got five slices, 25 grams of protein from bread. The whole deal with protein is it's not just like one thing. It's a whole array of amino acids. You know, it's like... 12 fucking things so sure it says protein it says it on the nutrition label that looks cool it's like oh five grams of protein but look i'm not inclined to say that is a high quality source you know you're going to want to be biasing contractile tissue milks eggs beef chicken fish you know anything under the sun i'd say when it comes to animal products you know, any dedicated protein source, or honestly, any kind of stereotypical protein source that you would think of, chicken breasts, you know, ground turkey, ground beef, egg whites, it's all good for you, man. That's what you should be getting into your system. So, tomorrow's going to be a back day, and I'm sure I will be moderately upset because by the time that I'm lifting tomorrow, I will have done a lot of studying as well as an exam and then start studying for my next one and be working on some projects. But I'm gonna make sure it doesn't affect the pump. That is not even a question. So I'll see you tomorrow for back. And of course, no matter how busy it gets, cardio in the morning. Don't forget it.